Hey guys, welcome back to another Bubbles and Bees Poshmark video. I don't know what to title this. <laughs> really quick, we do have to go through this video really fast because I have to get back to best friend Carrie because we're having a life adventure right now. <laughs> so I'll be right back, Carrie. Give me two seconds. Love you. But we are going to jump straight into what for actually, hold on, wait a minute. Thank you every single one of you who showed me love, who has shown me love from day one and who just absolutely blew up that last video, who, who liked it and who commented on it. Y'all, boy, let me tell y'all something. Y'all y'all should be showing out, y'all something else. And I love y'all for it and I super duper appreciate it, but we are gonna get straight into this because there's a lot. So uh, on this video, we are going to go through the different tags that Poshmark offers you to use in that little section where you can you pick three tags We're gonna go through every single one of them and define every single one of them <laughs> And I'm gonna put up some examples on the screen now listen y'all. I've only been a Poshmark reseller Literally going on four months. I started in October of 2023. So I'm still learning but we're gonna learn this together Okay, we in there like swimwear, but <laughs> So every definition that I read to you uh, came from Google and I just, you know, put it together and then I'll be showing you the images that are shown from Google. So, you know, we can only get so far. Poshmark has exactly, don't even let me say exactly because I'll be winging it sometimes, 96 tag words. I think that there's 97 on my list because I threw in an honorable mention since I use it so much. Um, 90 something tag words. We're going to go through about 40 something ish in this video because there is so much. So let's jump straight into it. We'll go in um, alphabetical order the way they're listed on Poshmark. Mark. So when you open up the little, you push the little tags button and it pops up that list of the one, the three that you can choose from. That's the list that I'm going from. So first we're going to start with 90s fashion style, basically oversized pants, baggy overflow tops, overalls, crop tops, things that are multi-pattern and multi-colors, all the etc. Some of y'all were grown in the 90s or teenagers or y'all were y'all were around so y'all have a good understanding of what that 90s style is some people are too far removed and then some people just weren't around at that time so 90s there we go the next one is academia and academia refers to a style that is influenced by learning think tweed blazers and cozy reading nooks perfect for spending hours and while studying uh, the aesthetic then divides into subcategories like dark academia darkest academia light academia art academia and even romantic academia and chaotic academia so basically you know <laughs> break out your schoolgirl outfit <laughs> stop listening to me y'all <laughs> Activewear is our next one. Activewear is casual and comfortable clothing that is specifically designed for exercise, sports, and outdoor pursuits, allowing you to actively and freely move around during strenuous physical activity. You typically wear this clothing to like yoga class, gym, or a daily run. Okay, and I'm literally reading the things that I found on Google. Y'all can probably go to Google and look at one of them first three or four drop down things that they give you and see the same exact words. So animal print <laughs> some of these are are given right but we rather be thorough we rather be thorough animal prints are inspired by the neutral pattern of an animal's coat or fur and they are extremely popular within the fashion industry there are many types of animal prints including leopard cheetah zebra tiger cow and who was wearing cow print and giraffe as well as snake skin and crocodile textures i don't know about y'all but i cannot tell the difference between leopard and cheetah print if y'all have a way to differentiate those two, please let me know. Uh, athleisure, this is something I do use a lot. It's a combination of the words athletic and leisure. So athleisure outfits can include yoga pants, tights, sneakers, leggings, and shorts that look like athletic wear, characterized as fashionable dress up, sweats, and exercise clothing. So most of us are athleisure in our normal day-to-day -day life. So you see people walking around in yoga pants at the store buying groceries. It's something that's designed for a sporty or out outsy physical activity and they're just wearing it normally and going on about their day. Cool beans. Of I don't know how to pronounce some of these. I probably should have checked that before I started the video. Ooh, I'd be winging it, y'all. I'd be winging it. I'd be winging it. Avant-garde. 
of this style is a term used to describe a type of fashion that is characterized by its bold, experimental, and often unconventional designs. It is a style that is constantly evolving and pushing the boundaries of fashion. I would imagine Lady Gaga right now. Love her. Uh, ballet core. In terms of textiles, you'll see a mix of materials that will either be performance ready or off duty casual. For example, while ballerinas are on stage, they typically wear tule or chiffon, the material that makes the iconic tutu, embellished with crystals, ruffles, or any other form of appliques. Divided into two categories, ballet rehearsal style athleisure and ultra feminine performance wear. Uh, the prior involves leg warmers, leggings, wraps, and the like, where comfort and movement is key, while the latter is more elevated, working with materials like tule and satin. So, ballet core. Barbie core! <laughs> Did y'all watch the Barbie movie? Did anybody go watch it? That movie was far more political than I thought it was going to be. Uh, Barbie core is a phenomenon that encapsulates the iconic doll's larger than life spirit. Barbie core is all about having fun with prints, textures, accessories, not being afraid of a monochromatic look and bright colors. The term refers to an aesthetic trend in both fashion and decor that is inspired by the iconic Barbie doll and incorporates elements of her bright, playful, and colorful style. Now, when I read this, that was super duper helpful to me because my original thought of what, like even going, like getting these definitions, I was like, oh shit, I've been using that wrong. Or I could use this more in more ways than I thought. Um, I thought Barbie core was strictly for things that were pink and apparently it's not. So, hey, throw that tag left and right, baby. Left and right. Be <laughs> beaded. So bead embroidery is a type of beadwork that incorporates sewing with beads, stitching seed, feet, seed beads to a variety of items or garments, creating an embellished look that enhances the appearance. Bead embroidery with seed beads to enhance many pieces of your wardrobe. So something with beads on it. You got some beads, type beaded or use beads in the keywords. Goddamn beads. <laughs> Those, you ever step on one of them things? <laughs> like, not a happy camper. Bodycon, this was a good one. Bodycon clothing is a style of clothing that fits very closely to the body. Bodycon is short for body conscious. Show off your curves in a tight dress that highlights your figure or something, anything that's just very form fitting. Bodycon, your the quarrels, the quarrels is out. The <clears throat> bodycon. <laughs> Don't get me started. Bohemian, right? Boho style is a free spirited aesthetic that mixes different cultures and artistic expressions into an eclectic style with an emphasis on organic elements and nature. Today, the term bohemian describes someone with an unconventional, often dismissive view of social structures and traditions. Modern boho encompasses trends from the beatnik and hippie eras when the culture aesthetic was similar to the bohemians and still represents a counterculture your spirit so hope that was helpful for when you can apply bohemian or even boho in your title and or description right uh, one of our givens is bridal so special clothes for a bride or a woman at her wedding such as a long white dress um, shopping for bridal wear relating to or belonging to a woman about to be married or relating to a marriage ceremony so sometimes you see like the robes that say bride on it or bride to be or you know stuff like that it doesn't have to be just a wedding dress just something related to a bride or something bridal right uh brides maid uh bridesmaids dresses lend more to a simplistic styling the object is for the bride's dress to stand out among all others an evening gown would be something more formal uh sequined ball gowns floor length something that you usually see at formal dinners and banquets let's see what's next what's next oh yeah cashmere Th this is especially in, I was about to say Q4, but look at my sales brain. 
work brain coming out. Um, <laughs> winter time. Cashmere is a type of wool that is made from the hair of a certain type of goat native to the Gobi Desert in Central Asia, long considered to be one of the softest and most luxurious types of wool in existence. Cashmere, cashmere is highly prized as a material for sweaters, scarves, and other light colored weather gear. Quality cashmere is not only the finest, softest, and warmest yarn, but it is also a very durable product which can easily last 10 years and over 200 years when taken care of properly yeah start up charging for cashmere <laughs> especially if it's the good shit oh god well that explains why it's, it is so expensive okay that makes sense um casual is our next one uh casual clothes are not formal or not suitable for special occasions casual wear is a western dress code that is relaxed occasional spontaneous and suited for everyday use plain and simple right christmas is our next tag traditionally speaking christmas trends uh fashion tends to lean towards classic items that make us feel alternatively cozy or glamorous from silly holiday sweaters to flannel uh to glistening accessories to color coordinated green and red i feel like christmas is one of those given ones Ooh, this one right here coastal cowgirl so the coastal cowgirl aesthetic is a mashup of beach wear and western wear. It's defined by a color palette of white, tan, washed out blues, the summery fabrics like linen, lace, cotton, and lived in denim, the ultimate coastal cowgirl outfit, a flirty linen sundress, and fashion forward cowboy boots. Think timeless cowboy boots paired with a flowery sundress or skirts, denim cutoffs with uh, fringe crop tops or graphic tees, and plenty of turquoise jewelry to top it all off. So coastal cowgirl really can extend to a, a lot of different items. So take that and run with it fast and far. Our next one is collegiate. <laughs> Rooted in traditional varsity styles, think monogram, emblazoned jackets, and cricket sweaters. Anything representing school spirit or apparel showing off a university that you or a loved one attends is fair game. Gotta love it, plain and simple, right? Uh, contemporary, and this is, this is one I use a lot and I feel like I've been using it a little wrong. That's all right. Contemporary fashion stands for high quality modern clothing and accessories that are currently on trend, which are also accessible and attainable, meant to describe labels with a designer aesthetic and more accessible price points. So, we love contemporary. <laughs> we love it. The thrifters, like the true thrifters, we love contemporary. Uh, Cohort sets. I would, y'all. I originally thought this word was cord sets, like like the extension cord or co it's co cord. They just in Poshmark they don't put the dash in there, but it's cord sets. Who knew? Cord derives from its name coordinates, and its satirical aspect satorial. Cord derives from its name coordinates and its satorial aspect meaning a matching set top and bottom in short coordinates set are matching outfits coordinate sets are matching outfits that consist of a top and bottom which are designed to be worn together to create a cohesive and coordinated appearance so if you have something that has a matching top and a matching bottom you need to be using that tag coord sets <laughs> who knew we learned in a day, y'all, because <laughs> I'm learning a lot. Corduroy is our next one. It says corduroy is a thick cotton cloth with apparel raised lines on the outside. It endures because it is a feel-good fabric, a thick, often cotton-based yarn. Corduroy is divided into whales, a.k.a. thick threads, that give the style its striped effect. We are good on the corduroy. Crochet, okay. Uh, crochet is like basically a garment or a piece of fabric, a handcraft in which yarn is made up into a patterned fabric by looping yarn with a hooked needle. A way of creating a fabric from yarn or thread using a crochet hook to pull loops of yarn through other loops. It's similar to knitting, 
except that usually only one loop is active at one time and that a crochet hook is used instead of knitting needles. So y'all have those hardcore like crocheters and those hardcore knitters, they're gonna know the difference. You can't two loop them. <laughs> you get one loop, <laughs> one loop. Uh, cropped. Another one that kind of is one of those gimmies, but cropped items are clothing that are shorter than normal. A crop top, also a half shirt, midriff top, or cutoff shirt, is a top that exposes the waist, navel, or abdomen. Cropped pants and jeans are any length shorter than full length. They can be cropped anywhere from right above the top of the ankle bone and up to six inches above it. Ankle pants are a specific type of cropped pants, so that's pretty awesome to know. Cruelty free is one of the tags on there. Uh, cruelty free refers to animal welf welfare and whether any animals were hurt or harmed during the production of the item. In fashion, it also means that the product contains no animal byproducts, but on beauty products, it means the finished product wasn't tested on animals. Cutout. Cutout is typically characterized by having cutout sections in which it reveals the skin. There are a wide range of cutout dress styles with cutouts being found down the sides, at the shoulders, around the waist and hip areas, as well as near the bust and the back. Um, the beauty is that there are no rules about where the skin can be shown. Uh, no longer reserved for cleavage or abs, cutout can now showcase random sex. Who has abs? Denim. <laughs> denim is a, I learned this was I didn't even realize this denim is a sturdy cotton twill fabric woven with an indigo gray or molted white yarn denim is perhaps one of the most well-known and commonly worn fabrics there is the difference between denim and jean is that denim is a fabric and jeans are a garment <laughs> I did not Okay. Denim fabric is used to make a wide variety of garments, including jackets, overalls, shirts, and jeans. Jeans are a type of garment com commonly made from denim cloth. So y'all, these all these many, many years I've been on the planet, I thought those words were interchangeable. They're not. <laughs> so distressed is our next word. Uh, distressed textiles have intentional signs of wear, such as fading, fraying, abrasions, or other effects that mimic the natural wear and tear that occurs over time. So I think we can we can spot that pretty easily, right guys? Uh, DIY, do it your damn self. <laughs> I remember one time, I, I'm not even gonna get into a story because we'll be here for 600 years. So DIY, basically, it means do it yourself. Uh, yet a general understanding has emerged around the world, which relates to recycling, redesign, and environmental friendliness. So many people use the word DIY when redesigning older things, such as furniture or clothes, so that the worn out items are given a new life again. All right, so I don't think it's something that you necessarily have had to make yourself, but um, I think it's fair game to say that, you know, you can use DIY when something was, um, it used to be a, a, a different item, now it's another item because somebody put a little bit of effort into it. A little elbow grease. Drop waist. I had to learn this one. A low horizontal waistline that usually falls near the level of the upper hips, balances the upper and lower bodies, and adds to the visual impression of height by lengthening the torso. The waistline of a dress, gown, or the like when it is placed at the hips rather than the natural waist. So apparently somebody's looking for drop waist because it is a tag on Poshmark. So you definitely want to keep that one in mind. Embroidered. This one comes up quite a bit for um, typical garments. Uh, embroidery is the process in which an image or design is stitched onto the fabric using various types of threads. Any image, word, or shape can be embroidered onto any material. Uh, the skill technique of embellishing and decorating a garment by hand using stitches and silks and yarns and sometimes including sequins, beads, feathers, and pearls. So let's hit this fall fashion means figuring out how to layer without looking like an overstuffed penguin and revisiting your favorite transitional weather gear. Literally, that was what came up on Google. So I ain't trying to be funny, y'all. That's just 
is how the cookie crumbled, okay? From chunky ankle boots to classic trench coats, think of earthy tones, neutrals, and so on. Um, if you're gonna go for bright colors, at least choose them in seasonal appropriate fabrics like knits, a sweater dress, and a bright color. Faux fur. I don't run across faux fur often, but when I do. An alternative to real fur, Faux fur is warm. To say that, say that like three times. Faux fur, faux fur, faux faux fur. Mm. An alternative to real fur, faux fur is a warm, durable, and versatile fabric commonly used in fashion to make outerwear and accessories. A blend of polyester, modacrylic, M O D A C R Y L I C, modacrylic. I hope I'm saying that right. And acrylic fibers, faux fur, also known as Fake or synthetic fur is a fabric that simulates real animal fur. So that's a gimme, but you can definitely put that tag in there when, when you get the chance. Festive! Festive attire does not translate to casual, but it's a more fun version of a cocktail and semi-formal dress codes. Uh, you can show off your personal style and play with bold colors and should absolutely not show up in sneakers or anything that could be considered laid back. But um, I would take that with a grain of salt because most of the time, like when you go to your company holiday parties or, or whatever, you go somewhere festive, like you're typically wearing jeans and like, some relaxed shoes and you may have like one of those fun Christmas sweaters like Santa that has like the you know jingle balls where his nuts should be like that's pretty damn festive to me <laughs> so <laughs> take festive with a grain of salt uh flannel flannel is a soft medium weight cotton fabric that has a nap fuzzy finish on one or both sides. Though it was once made of wool, by the 20th century flannel was more commonly made with cotton, sometimes mixed with silk. Nowadays, the softest, coziest flannel is 100% cotton, and what distinguishes flannel from other woven fabrics is its napping, N-A-P-P-I-N-G, which refers to the slightly raised texture of the fabric. So I think that one's easy to spot because I feel like a lot of people run into flannel pretty often. Uh, fleece. Uh, fleece is a popular and versatile synthetic fabric with a soft and cozy feel that makes the perfect solution for winter garments. It is made using polyester. The name probably brings sheep to mind, like the animal. Uh, usually though, the co uh, cozy fabric we call fleece is actually made from polyester. Plastic may not be your first thought, when you're cuddling up with the warm fleece, but that's exactly what polyester is. I mean, excuse me, what fleece is. It's polyester. My brain's starting to switch it around. Uh, floral, plain and simple. A floral fabric or design that has flowers on it. Floral. It's <laughs> right. Pink face, like that. Formal. A business formal dress code is characterized by a suit jacket with matching pants or a skirt. The darker the suit, the more formal. There are several variations as well as matching accessories to personalize your look. In Western countries, a formal or white tie dress code typically means tailcoats for men and evening dresses for women. The most formal dress for women is a full length of ball or evening gown with evening gloves. I feel like formal is one of those things that you, it's, it's, pretty obvious when to use that tag. Uh, fringe uh, is an ornamental textile trim applied to an edge of a textile item. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. A fringe is a decoration attached to clothes or other objects such as curtains consisting of a row of hanging strips or threads. Gifts, super simple. A thing given willingly to someone without payment. A present. Hope some of y'all get some gifts tonight. <laughs> Gorp core. This was good. I y'all. Not only did I misspeak misspeak about Gorp core in one of my earlier videos, then I actually used it in some of my listing. Y'all, it was so wrong. But it's okay. That's what grow the, the growing pains. Gorp core essentially draws inspiration from outdoor and adventure clothing by wearing functional and practical attire associated with activities like hiking and camping. This style elevates practical, rugged outdoor garments into the realm of high fashion, a fashion trend in which outerwear typically designed for outdoor recreation is worn as streetwear. It has been described as wearing functional outdoor wear in an urban, trendy style. So that's Gorp Core. Have I gone back and taken it out of the listings where it's absolutely wrong? Nope. <laughs> I'll get to that eventually, but plate's a little full. Goth. 
Gothic fashion is a clothing style marked by dark, mysterious, antiquated, homogeneous, and often genderless features. Goth fashion can be recognized by its stark black clothing. Um, Profusion of black velvets, lace, fishnets, and leather tinged with scarlets or purples accessorized with tightly laced corsets, gloves, precarious stilettos, and silver jewelry depicting religious or occult themes. Definitely, definitely think Morticia Adams right now. Like, just Adams family, really. Da -da -da -da. If you didn't clap, we can't be friends. Okay, grunge. Grunge fashion is characterized by durable and timeless thrift store clothing, often worn in a loose manner to de-emphasize the silhouette. The grunge style starter pack includes a soft, it literally says soft AF, band tees, baggy jeans, silver jewelry, combat boots, studded belts, and oversized zip-up hoodies, shades of black and gray. You can also take inspiration from grunge subcategories that have developed over um, you know, the past years. So. Uh, grunge is grunge is pretty versatile handmade pretty much right there <laughs> uh, basically refer to some part of the garment being done by oh some part of the garment being done by hand so it doesn't have to be the whole thing okay uh, the old-fashioned way this could mean a hand stitched collar or zipper or embroidery it could mean a single person made the garment rather than a, an assembly line in a factory so that's pretty versatile too Hanukkah I did not know how to spell Hanukkah until today and honestly if somebody like if i were playing hangman with somebody and they chose hanukkah as a word i would have the face the eyeballs the legs the arms like <laughs> they'd have to like start drawing shoes and like belt loops and shit so they can just i wouldn't figure it out although hanukkah does not correspond to a specific traditional outfit rule of thumb is to use a combination of blue and white colors in your dress or outfit colors blue and white hold a great symbolic significance to jewish people herringbone i like herringbone is also broken twill weave describes a distinctive v-shaped weaving pattern usually found in twill fabric a pattern made up of rows of parallel lines in which any two adjacent rows slope in opposite directions so you recognize that pattern that is herringbone uh, let's see holiday uh, festive attire also known as holiday attire, is a combination of cocktail attire, but often with a holiday flair. This dress code is particularly popular during winter times, of course. This versatile style um, can be incorporating seasonal colors and patterns to create a joyful, stylish look. I've seen this pattern my whole life and had no clue this is what it was called. I called it checkerboard. It's not. It has like a more formal fashion name. So <laughs> as a reseller, now you have to know it you're like required <laughs> hound's tooth the name hound's tooth comes from a jagged shape of the check being referenced as being similar to the shape and outline of the tooth of a hound dog this textile pattern is most often seen in black and white in many shapes and styles a design created in a woven cloth through a color and weave effect uh, traditionally the warp the warp layout is designed with alternating bands of four dark threads followed by four white threads similarly the weft is woven with four dark threads followed by four light threads so you can throw hound's tooth around now that you you got it going on and uh knit k-n-i-t knit fabric is made from one continuous fiber like yarn or thread which is repeatedly looped loop to form a garment a few ways to identify whether a fabric is knit or woven look at the threads that's literally what it says if you look closely at the fabric you should see the individual threads that make it up if the threads appear to have loops then it is knit if the threads have a particular crisscross pattern it is woven so guys we've gone through a through k the next video we will hit l through whatever the rest is i think it's y i think it ends at y and i appreciate you guys hanging out with me kicking it with me let's continue to learn and grow um if there's any honorable mentions in the letters a through k or Put it in the comments let me know i love learning and being able to share the information with you guys but thank you so much and i will see you in the next one